When the NASA Artemis recently once again delayed for years and cost more than $20 billion, many people asked me why don't we use SpaceX Dragon launched on Falcon Heavy to go to the moon instead of waiting for the more expensive government vehicles. This is a completely reasonable question, but there are many problems in the answers. Let's expose everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. In March 2019, Vice President Pence challenged NASA to land astronauts on the moon by 2024 by any means necessary. NASA's response to Pence's challenge was to proceed with what it already had in the pipeline, the Orion crewed spacecraft and the massive shuttle-derived space launch system, SLS Heavy Lift Expendable Booster Rocket. Badly, SLS has been in slow walk development since 2006, with more than $23 billion spent. And now we are living in 2024, but the rocket will not be able to send humans to the moon until at least 2027. More pitifully, SLS cannot deliver Orion to low lunar orbit like Apollo with enough propellant to fly at home. To fix this, NASA wants to build a new space station in high lunar orbit, which it calls the Gateway, to provide Orion with a destination that it can reach. But to travel down to the moon and back up to the high Gateway orbit, requires a lander with double the propellant needed from the low orbit. This Rube Goldbergian plan has been contracted for SpaceX Starship HLS. Too cumbersome and expensive. This is such a big disaster that many people are looking for an alternative. In that case, the contract that resulted in the Dragon crewed spacecraft was issued by NASA in 2014. Six years and three billion dollars later, it has flown astronauts into orbit for the first time. So far, what SpaceX has done is show that a well-led entrepreneurial team can achieve results that were previously thought to require the efforts of superpowers. In theory, Crew Dragon has a dry mass of fewer than 10 tons and 50% more internal space than the Apollo capsule that carried three astronauts to the moon. SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket has the capacity to lift Crew Dragon and a return stage into lunar orbit. There, the vehicle would dock with a lunar lander that would carry the crew to the surface while the Crew Dragon capsule remains in low lunar orbit. After sciencing on the moon, the astronauts would use the lander to return to the Crew Dragon, fire the return stage and come home to Earth. It would be a tight fit for four people, traveling for three days to the moon and three days back, but a Grey Dragon probably would be roomy enough. In fact, NASA selected SpaceX in March 2020 for its first Gateway Logistics Services contract to transport cargo to and from the Lunar Gateway. According to the contract, SpaceX Dragon XL would launch on a Falcon Heavy to deliver several tons of cargo to Gateway and remove trash. Speaking on a panel at the Spacecom conference on February 22, 2023, NASA's Mark Wise, manager of Deep Space Logistics for the Gateway program, said that NASA has been working with SpaceX on a series of studies to refine the Dragon XL design and examine cargo, configurations, and other capabilities that could be enabled by the spacecraft. The two primary advantages of this scenario are cost and, potentially, speed. NASA now spends in excess of a couple of billion per year on development costs for Orion and the Space Launch System. For this amount of money, NASA could procure several Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon Heavy rockets to launch them. Well, the cost comparisons are extraordinary. According to an independent assessment by the Planetary Society, NASA has spent a total of $23.7 billion on the development of the Orion spacecraft, which is designed to take up to four astronauts into deep space for 21 days. By comparison, through the Commercial Crew Program, NASA invested just $1.7 billion in Crew Dragon, which has now proven itself. Then there are the launch vehicles, NASA is approaching a total investment of $23 billion in the Space Launch System rocket, which likely is still months or longer from its first orbital test flight. Importantly, the rocket is expected to cost at least $4 billion per launch. By contrast, SpaceX paid for the entirety of the Falcon Heavy's development, and it would likely cost NASA between $150 and $200 million for a lunar launch. Using SpaceX's capsule and rocket could also get NASA to the moon soon because they are now sending astronauts to ISS. In contrast, there are no guarantees that Orion, a stripped-down version of which made a test flight in 2014, and the SLS rocket will pass their upcoming flight tests. So why wait on the more expensive government vehicles when commercial solutions are already at hand? 
Well, NASA Administrator Bridenstein was dismissive when asked about using Dragons instead of Orion for the Artemis program. I think it's important to note that Crew Dragon was specifically designed for low Earth orbit and, in order to send it to the moon, would require a ton of modifications, he said. I'm not saying you couldn't modify it, but if you modified it, it would look a lot like Orion. Another consideration is that Falcon Heavy is not rated for human launches, meaning it does not include various safety factors that would increase its reliability. However, NASA could solve that problem by launching a Dragon separately on a Falcon 9 and a propulsion module on another Falcon 9. They could then dock a procedure NASA perfected during the Gemini program more than a half century ago and proceed to the moon. Regardless, do you think NASA will agree to this if Dragon can be fixed to send humans to the moon? Definitely no. This is easy to understand. If that happened, what about their rocket and the politics behind it? For many, it sounds like a straightforward argument. Cancel the slow and outdated SLS and direct its $2.6 billion per year into novel public-private partnerships like SpaceX, which promise to revolutionize access to space. Now imagine this argument from the perspective of a congressional representative from Alabama, home of the SLS first, cancel the SLS and lay off tens of thousands of constituents, then take that money that had previously allowed their voters to have good incomes, mortgages, and a sense of pride from a high-status project and give instead to California and Texas, where SpaceX is located. You may get laughed out of the room. This is the core dilemma for those who want to end the SLS. How do you make a politically viable alternative? The answer must involve building a new coalition that is stronger and more motivated than the one currently invested in the status quo. This tends to be quite difficult and historically requires a major external event to predicate massive political change. The SLS could suffer a catastrophic failure that's what ultimately ended the space shuttle program. Or maybe a series of dramatic political realignments will significantly reduce the influence of regions that most benefit from the current program. Or perhaps the incentives themselves could change. NASA has already transformed its approach to new programs through fixed-priced commercial partnerships that better control costs and reward performance. However, none of these provide clear paths for those who wish to stand against the SLS. The reasons why NASA has the SLS remain far more compelling than the reasons not to have it. Meanwhile, on the eve of its first launch, NASA is readying a long-term contract securing upwards of 24 SLS rockets through at least 2036. The political support for the SLS remains steadfast and is likely to continue. For those who find this distressing, consider this. The lawmakers that make up the SLS political coalition are zealously defending the interests of their constituents. And isn't that the entire point of representative democracy? There is and will remain tension in the U.S political system between local and national interests. Ideally, local interests align with national interests. And until there is an alternative to the political dynamics that represent the foundation of the SLS coalition, perhaps the best path forward is to focus on making the program more efficient, more capable, and more effective in achieving its goals. In the 20th century, we succeeded in laying the first foundations for an outpost in LEO that is the ISS. Thanks to that, in this century, America can go further than LEO with a plan to build a lunar gateway that will be a bridge between our Earth and the Moon. Obviously, constructing a building in a place nearly 400,000 kilometers from Earth is very challenging, meaning requiring affordable delivery of significant amounts of cargo. Fortunately, with the support of SpaceX and NASA's partner under the Artemis program, nothing is impossible. Among them, can't help but say SpaceX's plan to develop a big size version of the Dragon spacecraft Dragon XL. However, its multi-year delay has raised many questions, especially since the birth of a gigantic vehicle like the Starship. On January 7, NASA and the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center MBRSC of the United Arab Emirates, UAE, had an amazing handshake for the Gateway Project, humanity's first space station that will orbit the moon. The Lunar Space Station will support NASA's missions for long-term exploration of the moon under Artemis for the benefit of all. According to it, the UAE will develop the crew and science airlock module for the Lunar Gateway, helping complete the design of the Lunar Space Station. The airlock will allow crew and science research transfers to and from the habitable environment of Gateway's pressurized crew modules to the vacuum of space. Hamdan bin Mohammed, Crown Prince of Dubai, stated that the project would be completed in 2030. As part of the agreement, the UAE will get a seat on a future Artemis mission, meaning they will provide a UAE astronaut to fly to the Lunar Space Station on 
on a future Artemis mission. In addition to operating the airlock, the United Arab Emirates also will provide engineering support for the life of the Lunar Space Station. These transfers will support broader science in the deep space environment, as well as gateway maintenance. Once the UAE's airlock module goes into operation, not only will it serve a role as the transfer between habitable and vacuum environments, but will also be used as a secondary docking port. The Lunar Gateway will be like a transit station between the Orion spacecraft and Starship HLS. Indeed, when Artemis astronauts blast off from Earth, they'll be in the four-seat Orion spacecraft. Orion will take them to the Lunar Gateway, and astronauts later will move from the Gateway to the Starship HLS. All maneuvers will occur through the docking ports on Gateway, such as Halo connected to the spacecraft docking system, and in an emergency, the crew and science airlock will replace those ports. Referring to the docking docking system on the Starship Lunar Lander on NASA's website on February 28, we saw the announcement of its full-scale qualification testing. This system will connect the vehicle with Orion and later Gateway in lunar orbit during future crewed Artemis missions. At the time I made this report, NASA and SpaceX were busy testing the new Starship HLS docking system. They recently completed 10 days of testing at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. They conducted more than 200 different docking scenarios involving different speeds and angles. The result from this full-scale testing will feed into ongoing computer models of the system, which will, in turn, feed into future testing and design. It's safe to say that SpaceX had a huge advantage in developing the docking system against Blue Origin, which developed the lunar lander Blue Moon for Artemis V. It is because previously Elon Musk's firm had four years to test this system successfully on Dragon 2. The Dragon 2 system allows the Dragon 2 spacecraft to dock with the ISS so crew and equipment can be transferred. The testing of Starship's docking system this time could be a clear signal of both SpaceX and NASA's determination to cancel the Dragon XL project. SpaceX's original plan was to develop and use the Dragon XL spacecraft to deliver cargo from and to the Gateway. Under the 2021st Gateway Logistics Services contract, NASA required SpaceX to transport cargo to and from the Lunar Gateway. To accomplish that task, SpaceX would develop a heavily modified single-use version of its Dragon 2 two spacecraft with more propellant storage, more space for cargo, and a range of other design changes. Known as Dragon XL, that spacecraft would weigh around 15 to 16 tons, roughly 33,000, 35,000 pounds, at liftoff and likely require a fully or partially expendable Falcon Heavy launch for each mission to the moon. At the time, it was a fairly balanced and reasonable choice on NASA's part, leveraging existing investments and experience with SpaceX and Dragon and erecting no major technical hurdles. However, However, it sounds like the emergence of the Starship rocket with much more capacity, more advanced technology, and cheaper has occupied the spotlight. Of course, NASA did not express directly its interest in Starship, and they delayed the project indefinitely instead. A NASA official said a year after the contract award that it had delayed a formal authorization to proceed on the first mission as the agency evaluated the overall plans for the Artemis program and when that mission would be needed. The lack of information since then, though, prompted speculation that the program might be in jeopardy. In 2022, the new April 1 STAR-FI was released by NASA as a roundabout way of saying that the agency highlighted interest in cargo transport capabilities well beyond the original contract's requirements and asked about innovative new capabilities that could enable such improvements. On February 22, 2023, speaking on a panel at the Spacecom conference, NASA's Mark Wise, manager of deep space logistics for the Gateway program, said that SpaceX would use Dragon XL for those initial missions, but left the door open for using the company's Starship vehicle for cargo delivery in the future. We are all for enabling evolution, he said. We talked to them about Starship evolution and how it all worked together, but we're not there yet because it's still in a development phase. It makes sense in terms of economic terms. Everybody prefers a high-capacity vehicle vehicle that could have a lower cost. Additionally, through the HLS program, NASA invested at least $3 billion in the Starship Lunar Lander project with barely any modification. The Starship architecture SpaceX and NASA are already developing could be used to deliver dozens of tons of pressurized cargo to cislunar space, lunar orbit, the gateway, the lunar surface, or just about anywhere else NASA wants. Still, there are technical challenges and reasons to believe that Starship can't easily replace Dragon XL. 
the mass limit of the Gateway's visiting vehicle being just 14 tons means that vehicles like Dragon XL must adhere to this limit to safely dock with the Gateway without overloading it. If Dragon XL exceeds the mass limit, it could potentially pose operational challenges or safety risks during docking procedures. Starship would likely weigh at least 100-200 tons more than the entire Gateway. Thus, it's harder to make the vehicle meet that requirement. The non-cryogenic propellant that Dragon XL would use is more stable and storability in space missions, especially missions lasting for a long time. This big-sized spacecraft is expected to spend at least from 6 to 12 months at a time at the Gateway. This makes a big challenge for Starship powered by cryogenic propellants as they require specialized insulation and handling procedures to keep them in their liquid state. However, even with advanced insulation and thermal control systems, some boil-off of cryogenic propellants is inevitable over time. Therefore, mission planners must account for boil-off rates and plan refueling or replenishment strategies accordingly to ensure the mission's success. Anyway, if SpaceX still intends to use Starship to replace all of its current vehicles, and NASA repeatedly hints about utilizing this massive rocket for all of Artemis's aspects, there will be no reason for Dragon XL to be born. With current progress, we can guess that they have found great solutions to the problems mentioned on HLS. And what we should do right now is wait until HLS's docking system is certificated before performing its role in the next Artemis mission. So, how about you? Do you think that Starship can replace Dragon XL in this case? Don't hesitate to leave your comment below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.